hello 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 everyone it's been months since i made a video so sorry so absolutely sorry don't mind my acne just because it's been so long since i've made a video i decided to make a video that i didn't mean to make 40 ish minutes but it makes up for it kind of sorta so uh hopefully you enjoy this this declutter video where i just talk about things that i do to clean up my room you see there's still windex from right there from cleaning it earlier and i i hope you enjoy it and i did miss you guys so hopefully you miss me i don't know um <laughs> enjoy and there's a jump scare in the next clip because i look kind of bogus i'm i've been tired i've been trying to get some sleep bye morning everyone it is currently Saturday, June 15th. The sake of this video is to strictly declutter everything. I've also started to do a low buying year. And you're probably wondering what's a low buying year. It's just a low buying year is just allowing you not to over consume so much. It just deflates trying to be uh, just the whole overconsumption thing in this world of constantly being influenced to buy things that you don't obviously need like if you see the next stanley cup and your thermos works perfectly fine in your kitchen cabinet or the next headphones when if people still have their wired ones i still have my wired apple headphones i keep those as my backup back feeling like you have to have the exact same thing that everyone has when things that you already have work perfectly fine is something that everyone should practice so that we can avoid overconsumption and I have a couple of rules that I wrote for my low buying year and you're probably like Trent it's the middle of the year and I'll you know answer and tell you that it really doesn't matter you can start anytime you want for your low buying year it's just gonna be a year from now June 2025 to see how that goes also I have been iPadding like crazy I love my iPad considering that I'm going back to school I've been starting to learn how to navigate it more using templates that I bought off of Etsy to make them look really cute, make them look like productive. It's not my coined philosophy, but something that is very time consuming, stressful, i.e. doing a, an assignment, any task that you dread doing, make it fun. I think Mary Poppins said that. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap, the job's a game. So my low buying consumption rules i'm gonna have so much fun editing this for starters my first rule is i want to continue buying secondhand more when i was in college back in ohio i consistently had so many thrift stores in my area as opposed to malls and department stores and things like that if i have a set budget of like 30 dollars and i go into the thrift store and surprise surprise the tags that have a uh, green stickers on them are all 50 percent off and everything that i've gotten were green stickers i got like six items or more for thirty dollars as opposed to maybe one item at a mall about 65 to 70 percent of my wardrobe is thrifted i was gonna say 80 but when i look back on some of the things that i get it's you know what i think it's a healthy medium i think it's a healthy 50 50. um my mom like most black moms talk very loud on a phone call that they have that's right in their face so if you hear my mom i'm so sorry anyway secondhand is very fun with a specific group of people if you find people that love to thrift just as you do make a day out of it make it fun go in and say i need these things make a grocery list find some things i really want to find a nice pair of dark wash jeans i really want to find a pair of overalls i've been trying to look for a pair of overalls for a very long time that are going to be really cute on me that fit me and i'm still on the hunt unfortunately it's also just a quality thing. Granted, when you go to a Goodwill or an independent bookstore, the birds are really talking today. When you go to a thrift store, yes, the smell kind of throws you off, but you just throw it in the, throw it in the wash. Just throw it in the wash. It's fine. I don't know a lot of, I don't know a lot of people personally who wear their thrift clothes. I just wouldn't trust it. As soon as I get my clothes, I detag them, throw them in the wash. Thrift clothing? 
most times are better quality than the things that are out in stores now where you thrift sometimes you'll find some old high school memorabilia that you have that somebody donated to goodwill or something like that which is what happened to me on this old t-shirt from my high school and when i looked at it you you would think it's a large but it's a medium like the quality system is very different back in the 90s than it is right now another thing that i thrifted that i love oh so much my pan-african color block coat that was probably like maybe nine dollars i have no idea where the brand is but i know it was definitely from the 90s it had to be smelled like straight cigarettes all the carcinogens but i definitely washed it like probably three or four times you just got to get past it you know like you got to have the platform and once you realize what you're dealing with just wash it you know extra heavy duty maybe put it in its own alone maybe you got to wash it by itself hand wash it do what you got to do next rule not buying so much for vacation now now when we go on family vacation some of the stuff that you already have are going to be accounted for like when you go out with your family to let's say disney world your hotel is already paid for your flight is paid for sometimes all you have to do is just pay for the souvenirs or pay for food stuff like that like i paid for my badges to get into dream con which is where i'm going uh my plane ticket to get there and my hotel to stay there that's who it was a lot of money to go into this stuff but look i'm gonna have a great time this is my first convention and i am so excited i'm so excited the reason why i don't i give myself just a little bit of grace is because there are some things with the costumes that I'm wearing that I just don't have in my wardrobe. So yes, I'm going to have to buy it, but I can always buy secondhand or just buy new. Avid theme party person. I love a good theme party. Make a lookbook first. See what you like and then thrift it because it's so much easier finding things when one, you already have a grocery list of it, but two, you could be finding things at a fraction of the price when it is new. And my other thing with secondhand is sometimes when I get jeans from there, sometimes they're the perfect amount of worn in. You know what I mean? Like department stores, their brand new manufactured jeans from the warehouse are very, very stretchy. Yes. But your first time putting those on, because I, I, I have to wear stretchy jeans. I'm a curvy girl. I can't wear straight jeans unless I find a good pair of straight jeans. Thanks so much for vacations. Just practice not having to always have something new for a vacation wherever you go i understand it completely wanting to feel completely fresh for a whole trip i've done it before i understand but for me i think it's better to look at what you have make a new little lookbook every time i go somewhere i'm invited somewhere out i have somewhere to be i look at the weather first look at the forecast see what's going on find some outfits even your favorite pieces of clothing, the stuff that you always love re-wearing time after time after time, you'll feel good wearing them if you just use your favorite elements in your closet to put on your trip and taking pictures and stuff like that. And it just helps not feeling like you have to buy something new. When you go out to these things, you'll never see these people again. Yes, I won't buy so much after this trip. Cause this one's special. Okay, the next rule sticking with only one to two soaps until they're fully done there's a point in your life when you're in your adolescence where you just hit that stage of funk your body's growing you're getting older hormones are hormoning all that stuff and you start using things to just combat the smell whereas what complements your body I want it more shine i want more hydration in my skin because a lot of the products that they have in bath and body works they're just not as no nourishing and moisturizing as maybe like a Nivea. Yeah, I'll show you something. The quality might be a little bit different when I pin this to my shirt. I use this big bottle of Cetaphil, right? Has no scent, no nothing. Really enjoy the moisture that it leaves my body because I can add so much on top of this when I do get out of the shower so that it can just fully be hydrated as well as being moisturized by my lotion. I like to layer a non-scented lotion because my body is already moisturized and I can use like my body oils, my perfume oils. I have a lot of perfume that I also have to give away, but it's fine. I know it's often for you to just completely just throw things out, throw things out, throw things out, donate, donate. Ask if your friends want some of the stuff that you have. 
you know oh i've got these things that i don't want anymore you want to look through it and see what you like and then you know there's a little gift for your friend a little something for your friend or oh i have these perfumes you want to take a smell you want to take one home i know it's like you know 50 percent empty but i think you'd like it so yeah just reach out to your friends and see if they want any things that you have now the first thing when it comes to my declutter is my clothes i want to get the the closet from the black lagoon out of the way eight months ago i did do a declutter when i got back home and i felt best to do the declutter now as eight months later because i feel like eight months is a good break you know it's almost a whole year but you want to make sure you've got everything you want before you get into the new one things like that it's long term so in the past eight months your whole style could change your whole you know you could have lost weight gained weight some things don't fit anymore some things just make no sense in your closet anymore why do i even like this i used to like this eight months ago but i hate it now just get rid of those things just evaluate everything in your closet and just wonder if this really is this is really suit me but aside your favorite items and realize why are they your favorite and build your clothing around that if there are things that you like in a specific clothing i like how it hugs my legs i like how it makes my chest look <laughs> i like how they fit on my sleeves my big thing for t-shirts i love t-shirts that end past my like they're basically hitting the fold of my bicep right before my forearm i like no love sleeves like that they are my favorite type of sleeve women's cut sleeves do not do that so i usually dress oversized my style is baggy oversized streetwear with an occasional cutesy preppy vibe i do sometimes say i have a style because i was asked this a lot but my default is baggy oversized if i like something that i like to wear and it's more fitted then i'm gonna wear it so it's just really i like what i like but on a regular normal day you will probably see me wear baggy stuff another thing if you are a person that wants to build their wardrobe build your basics first it's very crucial that you have you know your regular white tees your regular black tees short sleeve long sleeve tanks you know do you have a normal wash of jeans like do you have any straight jeans that have no rips do you have ripped jeans your neutrals are very important because again they go with everything so once you have so many neutrals i'm a person that's like you can never go wrong with a black crop top or a black tank top depending on the the fit and the style you can build off of that so much and especially during the time of the year start building your black turtlenecks near the end of the summer and start putting them away when you start coming back for the spring start getting your t-shirts your tanks your tube tops whatever your neutrals look like start building those first before you start throwing all these you know extravagant things first thing i did with my clothes is that i cleaned out my dresser first i made sure everything in that dresser was everything that i wanted to keep so that i can make room for the closet stuff to fit in the drawer one side is neutrals like blacks and whites and then the others are colors like they're all side by side in the same drawer a lot of high school middle school whatever memorabilia t-shirts because sometimes there are some shirts that you just don't want to let go because they're such memorable things like for me i have two birthday shirts that uh we got made and uh, i had a pink princess party if you guys remember what's it called sweet and sassy with the pink limo I had that kind of birthday party i don't know which one it was I remember the airbrush days for t-shirts we also got those made for my birthday circa 2011 at a smurfette party very interesting i really I, I don't i don't remember that theme too well i do remember like i didn't remember thinking i liked smurfette that much but to each its own I want to be able to look back on it but it's a thing where it's like it's just taking up space in my drawer so maybe find a little box or something to put all of your memorable clothes that you will never wear or can't even fit anymore and just putting them away so that they can make room for another thing that you wear in your drawer it's another tip taking breaks is so very crucial because this is a very overwhelming task like you are looking and folding and organizing and moving for hours and it's best to take breaks because you get to that point where you're in your groove and it's been three hours and now you're just burnt out because you haven't eaten at six yesterday 
I told myself, okay, I'm gonna give myself a couple of hours and we're gonna break at 10 for breakfast. So I will be back. Hopefully some of these things will help you in a way and follow along. Hello, it is the next day and hopefully the last day of all of this. I can be able to actively sit inside of my closet now. I've decided that this is going to be my bookshelf so that when I come into my little nook of my closet, it has to be clean so that I can get to my books. So I'm gonna train myself to make sure that the floor is always clear so that when I wanna go into my little library, see what I want, I can actively sit and read like I'm in a library. Some of these books I might give away, but we shall see. The thing you probably didn't know about me, I love rubber ducks. Some that I've accumulated over the years. This was when I went to scene 75 back in Ohio. It was a very fun time. It's only like maybe 150 tickets. I wanted to get another one, but I was like, elephants as well. So if you got best of both worlds, then should be set. But this elephant that I've had for a long time, I actually don't know where I got her from. She wasn't from the greatest show on earth, I'll tell you that. I don't know. I think my dad just found her and gave her to me. I think this was from main event. And I wanted her specifically because she didn't have an eye. And I was like, I like her. I think she's cute. I'm gonna take her home. So I took her home. Uh, my friend's brother. And it's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's so tiny. Now these these all these Disney ones I think I got them from five below and I'm not even sure this is all of them I did have a poo one but I have no idea where that one is so all these guys love them to pieces I want to get more rubber ducks there was a time where I had a lot but I've moved twice in my life, so they may have gotten lost somewhere. They in a, probably in a pond right now. Also from main event, a little, little ASMR. N let me stop. I have no idea where I got these guys. They may have been from Amazon or I just grabbed them. No idea. I, haven't, I don't have the story on this one, but they have been around for quite some time. Oh girl, she has a sister. I don't know where she is. I gotta find her little cowgirl sister. One is, you know, brunette or maybe a strawberry blonde if that's, if you're an expert. And there was one who was a blonde and I don't know where she is. She's somewhere in here. This is how I know these are old. I used to have a big wooden bed and I would stack them on top. And sometimes I would clean and put like, you know, wood polish on them and they would stick. So that's how old they are. I'm gonna place them around and stuff like that to, you know, make it look like a little library. I'm really excited. All of my books <laughs> are right here. So we're gonna go through that. We've got a couple up here. Oh, this is when I went um, painting on the beach. Oh, I have to turn my bringer off. Years ago, this was the year before I went to college, actually. It was a summer before college and my best friend and our friend went to the North Avenue Beach probably and we saw this thing where if you go to the dollar store you get some paint print out a picture and you trace you know whatever art style you want and get the colors you just have it and it's Connie and Steven isn't, isn't it so cute I gotta get better at it because from afar it doesn't look too bad but up close it's kind of kind of splotchy we were there until like nighttime. We had a picnic. It was so much fun. The the frame is a little broken, but it's, you know, it's fine. Don't worry about that. I may start with hardcover books at the base to make sure that it's like decent. So the only hardcover books I really have, because I'm starting to ease my way into hardcover books. I didn't like them when I was younger because they just weren't as practical because I was always on the go, like always outside and doing stuff. So paperbacks were always just more durable. Well, they're kind of, it's kind of counterintuitive because hardcover books are, the hardcover books that I have are Shakespeare and modern culture. So you're essentially just talking about uh, how Shakespeare plays affect the way that we speak to each other, the way we communicate, the psychology behind some of them and things like that. Uh, my favorite Shakespeare play, one second you guess, 
you're right it is Macbeth also have good material I haven't gotten it yet but I thought the card cover was really pretty and of course I read the book jacket of course I read it but I haven't gotten to it yet it's the same person who wrote everything I know about love it's like a really popular self-help book I haven't gotten to that but I've seen it everywhere so yeah I moved it better so that you can see the books actively doing what they need like so you could see the books another little friend my friend Madison from high school got me this I don't know if it was for my birthday or for Valentine's Day or for Christmas even well it was probably Valentine's Day because of I haven't gotten to this yet I'm I was at a bookstore a couple months ago and I was looking at the whole you know a Court of Thorns and Roses that no was it that franchise there's a specific way that you're supposed to be reading these in order and she explained it to me and I kind of forgot so maybe I'll go on TikTok and be like I'll just read it because apparently you're supposed to be reading something else before you get into Throne of Glass or something I might be wrong I may be wrong I don't know I'm gonna see if this is around the same size are there any books that are taller than Throne of Glass then we'll move that over writers and lovers i was in a book rut months ago and i had this book and i loved it i was reading it in tandem as listening to the audiobook it was one of those books that I just did not want to be away from so i listened to the book when i didn't have time to read it when i was out um it's about a woman named casey who is currently working to finish her book that she has been writing for six years while being a waitress and going through the trials and tribulations of love and relationships and coping with the death of her mother so she's a little unhinged living in massachusetts in her small little apartment and dating a man 10 15 years older than her with two sons that mother had passed so it's it's pretty good I, I really enjoyed it uh, it's a little yeah it's a little shorter if not the same I think I'm gonna put all my Emily Henry books together because you know watch out for Emily Henry she may be the next Meg Cabot she has released maybe two books or at least one to two books every year so watch out for her thought I had people we meet on vacation but I think I gave that away you have beach read and I essentially will have to put this to the side because I'm almost done with it but I'll keep it I'll keep it and you're probably wondering like if you're reading it why is it in your arsenal it's because I'm listening to it I was listening to the book I have audible premium every book readers dream to have like nice cute spines that match that's her thing because there's another book that I might read from Emily Henry called happy place it's pink and it's got this same artwork and the art style that she uses on her books so yeah I may put all of my little childhood books here and put all the little duckies around it okay I think I might do that who knows though or maybe I put my classics because I do have the one and only Great Gatsby aka my favorite book that I read in high school yes it's cliche and don't think you're special just because you like Catcher in the Rye when you were in high school. It's say what you want about Great Gatsby. It is a cult classic. Crying in H Mart, another book that I finished this year that I read and listened to in tandem because there are books out there that I just don't want to be away from while I'm doing other things. I was out with my sister uh, and we went to this we went to Anderson's bookstore it's an independent bookstore I think it'll help. I think it has two but in the beginning it was an independent bookstore just finished writers and lovers I wanted a new book and I was looking around seeing what I wanted and this is probably my first non-fiction read in a like a long time I like memoirs it just depends on the story and things like that the last memoir I probably read was probably in high school and it was the things they carried really heavy right it's a story about um, a man in the Vietnam War and his PTSD is watching things happen to the people that they were um, in Vietnam for. On True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think I have three books by Taylor Jenkins Reid that I'm going to put all together. The spines might be a little different, but it's okay. This is the first book that I actually finished this year. So I talked about it in the other stories. 
and other videos. Oh, and Lord Love Tales. Wish we'd come back soon. I just, it's a lot of stressors in my life right now. I had seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I gave it to my mom. I wonder if she read it. If you liked Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, you will more than likely like Daisy Jones and the Six because it's that same, it's not the same writing style, but it's also the same premise. It's both like historical fiction and it also talks about someone actively writing the story while coming back and this is the story, you know? Hope I didn't spoil it for you, but I think you'd like it if you read it, if that's your thing. Seven Husbands was set in around the 50s golden era of Hollywood. This was set in the 60s, 70s. Drugs are literally everywhere. Be in another life. I haven't gotten here yet, but I saw this TikTok that was like, if you're in your 20s, um, this is a book that you need to read. And I was like, bet. And I like Taylor Jenkins Reid. What's not to like? Oh, so I have four, actually. I have four books by Taylor Jenkins Reid. You know what? I'm a little proud that I have read multiple books by different authors. Like, I've read three books by Taylor Jenkins Reid, three books by Christina Lauren, two books from my favorite author, Tessa Moshfag. I like it. I don't know, I like the consistency. Razor, a book that I will get back to. Eileen, I started reading Eileen, which is also by Tessa Moshfag, and I think I stopped reading it because I think I realized that I am a situation, situational reader. Meaning, like, where I am in my life, I like to read things that parallel how I feel. And if I'm reading, because I'm currently reading The Bell Jar right now, and I'm starting to try and get out of my funk mentally, hence me decluttering my room, and Esther Greenwood is in this state of depression, and she feels like, and she's in this low of life, not feeling accomplished and doing anything. And it just doesn't really fit me right now. I feel like I'm contradicting myself because I really do enjoy The Bell Jar. Like, I really love reading this book, but just where I am right now, she's being so real. Like, I understand completely, but it's like, I can't, I can't resonate with you right now. I can't be with you right now. I hope that makes sense. The Alchemist, a book that I recommended to a friend and didn't end up reading, but the friend did and very much enjoyed it. So I did my job. I still will read it. This is a little taller. That's better. Favorite book that is folded and tattered? Like, you see how it's bent? It's bent because it's been under so many clothes and I step over the clothes so it just gets all moved around. Um, the best coming of age story. I may reread this. Hotel 21, a book that I started about this girl who works at 21 hotels or who has worked at 21 hotels that would be insanity she goes there she gets the ick low-key and then she leaves but she always has to steal something before and she leaves you know she writes a little list about the things that she stole so for example at her first hotel it was a three-star rating um february 2011 to february 2011 her whole stay was three weeks she stole nail scissors and again these are from people's luggage by the way nail clippers um jester pot of cream cigarette lighter hair group of a pearl tweezers a shirt button and a gold brooch so she has this philosophy where she steals things where essentially people will forget about them hence like the shirt button Sounds like a little bit of a hoarder issue to me. Those little flying things that come out at the end of the year, I use that as a bookmark and I continue to do it. It is very much old, but I still keep it because that was a nice memory. There. Crazy how I haven't given any books away. What can I say? I'm a slave to my passions. Foreshadow. That works. So then I could just put that girl here. Oh, unless she doesn't, or you know, she could just sit. She's been standing for all her life. She could finally sit and rest. All right, so next we've got our little childhood area. And this is where I'm gonna put all like my graphic novels, my comics also. Oh, I forgot. Um, also putting Great Gatsby and Angela Davis, A Freedom is a Constant Struggle back up here. Forgot about that. They were literally behind. 
Great Gatsby. I was gonna put Great Gatsby. I was gonna put Great Gatsby at the bottom for childhood stuff, but I'm like, nah. Let's put Angela Davis on an angle like that so the books don't flop over. You know what I mean? My favorite children's book was the one and only Ivan. It's got so many post-it notes on it. Oh, there's a card in here. This is when my mom would uh, send me care packages and she'd always leave a little note. Notes and writing are very instilled in me for as long as I can remember, whether that be my mom, she wrote notes for me, my dad wrote notes and put them in my lunch. Notes have always just been a big thing for me. I've always loved letters. So there's a lore behind that. Uh, when I only I have been such a great book until I realized a sequel. I really like that they kept this. I want them to write a story about Stella. If Catherine Applegate, if this ever comes on your for you page or you're recommended, please have a Stella story in the works if you haven't already. One and only Stella, how she before she came to the big top mall at exit eight, write that book yesterday what the heck how could i forget <laughs> there were more books behind me that i just didn't see including otessa moshfeg book right here gave thought daughter a whole new meaning when i read this book not thought daughter thought daughter so right next to eileen i could swear i had death in her hands maybe i gave that away damn i wanted to read that <laughs> If you know, you know. It was an experience to say the least. Now, if anything for this book to be something that you take from, if gore and, I don't know, maybe cannibalism, you know, just a little, if you like gross stuff, this is definitely your girl. And I don't argue that there are beautiful grotesqueries in literature, but it's just not for me. And that's and I can respect that because I respect her writing. I respect her work as an author, but this just didn't sit with me. And I feel very proud that I finished the book and say that I didn't like it because a lot of people go in reading maybe 30 pages of a book and like, I don't like it. And it's real. That's very true. But to get through the entire book and to still be like, yeah, I don't like it. It's kind of funny, though. It does have some like funny bits in here. It wasn't meant to be funny. So maybe I keep this book, come back to it. But it wasn't like a com. It was. It wasn't a comedic thing. It was just sometimes the phrasing of some of the people in the in the book and the story said some things. Marek is an abused shepherd um, son, and Latvana, the town, is governed by this lord, and the lord is actually Marek's uncle, and the only person who knew that was his dad, and what makes it so funny is because he finds this out quite literally nearing the end of the book i was like lord william is my uncle and the dad was like yeah so he was like so why are we poor <laughs> you gotta understand these people are living off of biscuits and gruel every day and william's up here in his high horse eating the the most luxurious of meals and you can barely have anything alive you got this old witch ina who's nursing every child until she's old and gray and when she goes blind she d d takes out her eyes and replaces them with horse eyes which makes no sense to me but william is also a terrible person so it's just like i can understand why he shielded him from Mark. so it's like i don't know but that was insanely funny she's like bro where's the money at let me put left on here and it's um you know it's glory glory gory 84 is this the whole big brother thing i'm gonna put the poems back here put a little ducks on top put this up poetry back here i'll put a little I'll put a little duck back here, sure. No, they all have to be together. The all three brothers have to be in close proximity so that they can like banter and be like, oh, you stink. No, you stink, you know? To mention this really great series called Superhero Huff that I got from Black Girl Expo years ago. They're all signed, by the way. You know, 
a woman who also lives on the west side of Chicago who is going through the, you know, the behind the scenes of being a truck agent and going through the motions and having relationships and stuff like that. It is a really empowering thing, like a powering thing that I, I thought was really cool. So I had to get it. And when I went with my sister a couple of years ago, I had to find her so I can buy the fourth one. So I have to see if she has made more. Hopefully she has. Like It's so pro-black in the best way possible. You literally start off in the first issue with her saying my ancestors and lineage were not only prepared for but waiting for great anticipation and I was like so true to the comic book store again soon to buy more but um, the things that I'll show you let's see if you know the pattern this one is a Dark Knights of Steel Tales from the Three Kingdoms I really like this one this story in the middle specifically I think I just really like the art style and how it was like you know fantasy medieval type type beat i love the colors man who stopped laughing three four five and six i was gifted these but the first two i still have to find killing joke i watched the movie first before i read the comic book and i you know i should have flipped it but it's kind of some of the panels in here are just clean cut copies back in the movie man that scene where Barbara is, she opens the door to the Joker and it's got that and it's his silhouette and it's just his smile. My body quite literally took a screenshot. Like that's, that kind of scares. Like it's not like one of those, but it's like, you know? We've got the Batman, the Court of Owls. I need to get more. Can you tell I like Batman and the Joker and their dynamic? Quite literally the antithesis of each other. So I love me a good balance. What is so, insanely funny and adorable about this duck is that it's its eyes are just a little too spaced out but it's okay we still love it you know i think donald duck might like batman and joker so let's put them right there if you ever want to do some disney trivia i'm your girl i will take us to the championship trust for care bear if you didn't know it is fun shine bear i think that was kind of a given though and there you have it my little library nook. I love it so much. I will probably put a little beanbag chair in here or something or a little blanket so I can just have my little tea right here. Me, I put a little coaster right here and just vibe out and play my iPad lo-fi vintage aesthetic playlist that I've cultivated, accumulated, congregated. compiled pick which one you want that I have put together for a long time so that's it we're gonna finish cleaning and then we're gonna close this wonderful video up I will see you soon And just like that, I'm done. When did I start? Friday. When did I finish? Tuesday. No, that's a lie. I started Thursday. I started Thursday. Yeah, I did. I have had a long time decluttering what I want, what I don't want, sitting too long on some things that I just genuinely don't need. And I had 
maybe a semi fun time, whatever amount of fun is it takes after the threshold of looking at clothes and moving stuff. Do you ever get to that point where you're cleaning and you're just like, fuck, everything's going in the trash? That's where I was. But that was like maybe after the second day. But I digress. I really went in with music through this whole ordeal. And I'm talking R&B, my playlist, my clean and playlist, Disney, Steven Universe, of course, absolutely. And amongst many other artists and genres to get me through this entire mission of decluttering my room. So glad that you're still here. This is a this is a doozy. This is a long video, but even still, I'm really glad that you made it all the way here. And hopefully, you learned some things. You had some fun watching. Hopefully, I feel better about not having so much clutter anymore, and I'm more mindful of the things that I buy and more grateful of the things I already have or some things that I put to the side that I know my friends would like and I'll give them when I see them and, and they have the chance, hopefully that they'll like them. I, I think I know my friends well enough to know that these are some things that they like. Uh, everything is right where they need to be. I've got a candle lit. It concludes the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed everything that was going through this video. It was a little chaotic to say the least, but it was, uh, it was my mess, it was my chaos. You know when people say it's a mess, but it's like a beautiful mess, something like that. But hope you have a great rest of your morning, day, night, whatever time of the day you're having when you're watching this video. I'm going to go stuff tacos in my face, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye! I was awake yesterday since 6 a.m., and you're probably like, Trin, why were you up so early? Because, my darling, there are things to do. And I rarely have time to do any of them. So we're gonna go through that. I have a phone call. And when there's a thunderstorm outside. Where are the, where's the other shoe? Somewhere in that closet. Underneath the covers you huddle and hide. You hear me now? Yep. Uh, I said I'll get you a sharpie and write Atlanta on it. Why would you do that? Nothing is holding me down now. I should put the one slot shoes on the bottom. That would make more sense. Oh. Oh my goodness. All the books were falling. Oh no. Because you wanted a pen from Atlanta. So I'll give you a buy a pen out here. And then I'll write where I got it from. No, I would most definitely like a pen that looks like you got it from a souvenir place that's got Atlanta on it. The cheesiest of cheese. Oh, mm, okay. What I want to be, I'm a master of me. Is it the thought enough to let you off of the ground? You know, it's a black girl owned when it's a black girl comic with cards for bundles on the back. <laughs> we could be independent together. I got these for fifteen dollars. These nice little loafers. They're a little crease, but mind your business. I would have went to like a uh, staple and like here. You like what is it? Someone <laughs> So, okay. There's this girl who loved Princess Tiana and she literally designed the store at Disney, met uh, Anika Nani Rose, met the Chase family that inspired the story. She worked with the animators on the film because she loved Princess Tiana and she looks just like me. That just made me cry. Oh my God. I have heard news that Madeline Miller is making a retelling on Hades and Persephone. Stop the presses. I'm so excited. If you've known me for a long time, I love Lore Olympus and it just ended. 
Now, don't tell me anything because I haven't finished it because I put some time away so that I can, you know? Madeline Miller, she has her degree in classics, so it's not gonna be anything like a real big retelling, but it's Hayes and Persephone, and it's written by Madeline Miller. I'm gonna enjoy it. It was gonna be accurate, but how the way that she writes, it's gonna feel like a warm hug. Maybe I'll put poetry right here. Um, there's this YouTuber that I have watched for a long time. Her name is Rihanna McGavin, and I've watched her slam poetry since elementary school. And it was the same workshop that we had for our eighth grade class, and we all wrote poems. They weren't poems necessarily, now that I read them. Uh, this journal entry, or what if you want to call it a poem, is called Passionate by yours truly. At the age of 21, there are two goals in life for me. One is to be a professional trombone player and to adopt an elephant. <laughs> uh, my elephant will live beyond his limits because uh, that's when I had literally found out that you can adopt animals at a zoo. Like you can like adopt them and stuff, but I understand like zoos and, cat and, and, and captivity and stuff like that and finding the ethics in zoos and stuff. You know, it's, I, was, I was young, okay? My elephant will never be lonely because I, Trinity Gwynn, will do my best to visit my elephant every day. I'm no Jane Goodall, but I know that. <laughs> Elephants can remember a certain person, animal, or place for five plus years. This is when I was starting to get into my whole zoology bag too. For trombone, that's another story. I started trombone in fifth grade and this was the year that I could officially start band. At first, I wanted a softer instrument like the flute. Gross. I literally said, it literally says like gross right there, right? That's Susan. <laughs> it literally says flute, gross, right there. Who did I think I was? But me, I wanted the lower and passionate, like the cello, the bass, the tuba, the, the bass clarinet, the trombone, the sousaphone, and even more than that. A 10 year old girl playing an instrument almost twice my size. Yeah, it was around twice my size. I thought it was a stereotype that girls always played girly instruments like you rarely see any women playing the tuba and i thought that was badass because my high school teacher plays the the tuba and i play the trombone and i don't really look like i play the trombone when i tell people that they're like you look like you play the cello you're right it's my secondary instrument that i'm learning but i play the trombone bass clef girly bass clef girly to the day i die i know that's right love me some enemies to lovers man i also really like slow burn like, the anticipation is killing me. Like, we know, like, you see two people together, and it's just like, so you guys gonna kiss or what? Honestly, I honestly knew that Mr. Daniel made the right choice because I was better than the older players. His words, not mine. Uh, my passion is not limitless. I still go beyond the limit as an animal and trombone lover. Oh man, what are you talking about? <laughs> no. Alright, though. Alright, though.